Hey you all, so I wanted to do this quick recording of a quick experiment I did over the weekend using Gemini 2.5 Pro. So this is the new model from Google DeepMind and I have access to it here within WindServe. So I actually took it for a spin and I'm getting really good results. In particular, I noticed that this model can generate consistent code, like very long consistent code. So that's a huge improvement over the previous Gemini models for code. For this particular example, what I did was I asked it to create a Next.js app, so a fully functional app. And I actually gave it some script that I developed using Python. And something I typically do with these models is I would develop the script first, make sure everything is working and I get all the functionalities I want and then I would potentially convert that into a web app. So I did exactly that. The code that I passed to it is basically a script that I wrote. So all the working code is here and it's written in Python. And I basically told it, help me build an Next.js web app that provides a search agent. This is a search agent application. The scripts inside this folder, which is these scripts right here, provide working code of the search agent functionality, then use that code as a reference and help me build a fully functional search agent app with Next.js. So that's the app that you see right here, all the folders that you see here is what Gemini 2.5 Pro generated for me. And it actually created a new folder within this folder here. So it's web app. So this entire thing is where the web app lives. And I gave it some image here as inspiration. This one is from Perplexity for the UI stuff. The result is not the same as this, but it still gave me something nice that I could. But overall, I'm very impressed by how good it is at, again, generating these long scripts and long lines of code and understanding code as well. So that's what I was testing here, whether it can understand code that I was passing. So this script in particular has, I think over, I don't know, like over 300 lines of code. I have the cascade log here open just to show you exactly what it did. So it went ahead and built this app and you can see here it's analyzing the code that I passed it. I didn't give it a plan. Typically you want to give it a plan, but here it's fine. I just wanted to quickly test this, whether it was working. And then it told me, okay, it analyzed this and then analyzed the different files that I gave it. And it figured, okay, you needed to create a new folder, right? That's best practice. And then it wrote all the code here. And then it wanted to install this XA node. So I'm using XA API for all the search queries. So I, then I corrected it and I told it, hey, this is the package. It's XA.js. I believe that's the right one. Well, that's the one I found, a JavaScript version. So that's the only correction I gave it there. And then actually made an error here because of this decision right here. So typically with these models, this is why you you would need like a WinServe rules or cursor rule, whatever you're using, you would need to set those rules so that the system knows that that's the library you want to use. That's the library it needs to install because it would make a mistake here. Typically they do make mistake here. And that would mean that some part of the code would probably be obsolete or have the wrong code. And that's exactly what happened here. So it actually changed the code and then it fixed that code. And then from there, I think everything went very smooth. And it told me here the API keys. I created that file. I did that myself. I run this. Again, this is the error from the route.ts and I just gave it that and it'll help fix this. It fixed it and that's pretty much it. I would say less than five minutes, something like that. It created this entire app. So let's look at the result of it. The most important thing for me, what I'm assessing is that if the code is actually working, if the application is working, that's that's the most important thing for me at this point. From here, then I could add additions. I can improve the UI. I can do all of those things. The model that really works great for this kind of stuff for me when I'm starting a new project is going to be Cloud 3.7 Sonnet and to some degree Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. This is my default model at this point, but I think this model here, this Gemini 2.5 Pro, it's working very similar to Cloud 3.7 Sonnet and that's expected. I mean, this is one of the best models out there and I do believe it sort of competes with Cloud 3.7 Sonnet and this is changing, right? With more updates, with new capabilities, these models are improving very rapidly and that's the amazing thing. That's the impressive thing here. So I encourage everyone to experiment with these models and to see what works best for you. I'll be switching between these two models whenever I have issues with this, I'll probably switch to this and notice that this is in beta, right? So this one has those rate limits, which a lot of people have been complaining about, and it may also be leading to slow generations as well, but still experiment. If you have access to it, experiment with this one, because I do believe it has very similar quality. It feels very similar to this one, if not better in some cases, at least for this particular example that I'm showing you here, I think Gemini 2.5 Pro did an excellent job. So let's look at the app. This is what the app looks like. It's a very simple application, right? This is running locally and you can see it's an AI search agent and your search query. So here I'm going to say, what's the latest on Tesla? And this is going to use the XS search API and the text doesn't come out too well. 
I think, again, that needs to improve. That is more on, on the UI side of things. I do think Cloud 3.7 Sonnet is a lot better at this. When I do like one-shot app generations, it tends to be better at the UI stuff. But I think this one also has that potential. What I needed to do as well is tell it, okay, what are the components I want to use if I want to use a specific library such, such as Shad CDN or something like that, or the UI stuff or anything like that. I think that would have been helpful, but that wasn't the focus of the demo. I just wanted to test if it works out of the box. All right, so I'm going to go search here. So it's going to search, right? It's loading. So that seems to be working. All right, so we can see here, this is the answer. As of the most recent updates, here are some key developments related to Tesla. These are the news articles that it returned. You can see the citations right there. It doesn't show the citations right here. Maybe this is something I can improve, but I know it's working. The other thing is because this is a simple search agent, it doesn't have information or the model doesn't know what the area it is. That's an improvement that I need to add here. That's typically what you would run into when developing AI agents. So that's something to keep in mind here. These probably are old articles, but that's totally fine because I just wanted to test things out. And then this is just some debug information. It added this, but I never asked for this. It just came here. Maybe this is, I think, useful, like how it decided to perform the search. If it should search, it's true. So it does do some tool calling, right, to determine whether to perform a search. It also has another function call for optimized search query, which is going to optimize the initial query that I gave it, right? So the initial query that I gave it here is going to optimize that, and that is what is going to be fed to the Exa Search API. So it understood that. That's the code script that I passed it, right? That helped a lot, the system. And look, I have something that's working, and from here I can continue to add more functionalities to this. I will continue to use Gemini 2.5 Pro with this, add functionalities, add features, maybe even a sign-in button here, and we'll see where this goes. I'm very excited about this. I I think having something like Gemini 2.5 Pro, in addition to the other excellent reasoning models, such as Cloud 3.7 Sonnet, really makes it exciting for developers. You can experiment with the two and see what are the drawbacks and strengths. For this in particular, in summary, I would say this model has, obviously it has longer context. It will be able to understand longer you know, code. It will be able to generate, I would say also longer code. And the multi-model capabilities, I haven't really tested that. I don't know if that's something that is supported, but I'm just starting to play around with this and I wanted to share a little bit on some of my own experiments where I'm using Gemini 2.5 Pro.